Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this service of prayer and thanksgiving for the Feast of Pentecost, the birthday of our church. Let us pray. We meet in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with your peace. Come, Holy Spirit, unite us in our thoughts. Come, Holy Spirit, raise us by your power. Come, Holy Spirit, come now. Dear Lord, as we gather in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Spirit to worship you, albeit from our own homes, we bring our gifts of listening, of prayerfulness, of knowledge and of wisdom. May our gifts be united to honour you, and may each of us receive from you that which we need. Amen. God, your love is unconditional. Your gifts are offered with measureless generosity. Your peace is all-encompassing. We are sorry for the times when we have put conditions on our willingness to care. When we have kept that which we have for ourselves and refused to share with others. When we have failed to seek peace and have caused discord. Forgive us, restore us, renew us by your spirit of life. Amen. And so the readings for today for Pentecost. The first is that reading from the Acts of the Apostles, which talks about God's Spirit being poured amongst them. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And our psalm, Psalm 104. Lord, how various are your works. In wisdom you have made them all, and the earth is full of your creatures. There is the wide, immeasurable sea, there moving things without number, great and small. There go the ships to and fro, and there is the Leviathan whom you formed to sport in the deep. 
these all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are troubled. When they take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. And now, the Gospel reading from St John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now sometimes, particularly I think during lockdown, communication with the people in your own house can be a little bit poor. And I wonder whether there are times when Andrew and I speak the same language, well, whether we even inhabit the same universe, let alone speak the same language. And the idea of that poor communication always used to raise its ugly head when I'd ask Andrew to do different jobs in the house. When I was teaching and we were doing up the house, I'd say to him, can you knock a little hole here and we can have a bit of light coming in? No. That was it, just no. Why? Can't be done. Why can't it be done, Andrew? You can't be serious. There's nothing wrong with it the way that it is. But I don't like it the way that it is. I was thinking it would be a good idea to have it another way. No, can't be done. Well, it could be done. If it was done, it would mean moving this and changing that, so no, it can't be done. Andrew, can it be done? Well, it could be done, but it's not being done. <laughs> Nothing is can be completed without good, effective communication, and that includes the early church's project of spreading the good news throughout the world. Today is Pentecost, the church's birthday. It's when we celebrate God, the Holy Spirit, being present in our lives. Jesus speaks of the Spirit as being an advocate, someone who understands the issues and argues for the truth, someone who helps with communication. There will come a time, Jesus tells his disciples, when he'll no longer be there to speak to people about himself and about God. That task will belong to them and his, his followers. But they're not carrying out that task on their own. His disciples are not to worry because when he is gone, God will be with them and with us in another way to help us all communicate. And the story of the day of Pentecost shows this working in practice. The disciples have lived through momentous events and experienced strong emotions. They are exhausted, they are confused, and perhaps they're a little afraid too. But then something miraculous happens that turns their world upside down once again, and the result is communication. Suddenly, they have words. They can go out into the street with confidence and tell the crowds what has happened, and the crowds can hear them. Whitson, Pentecost, is when the balloon went up for Christianity, when the church burst into life. A balloon before it's inflated is dull and limp and lifeless. But when it's blown up, it becomes transformed into something wonderful, taking on a totally different character, 
and the way grandchildren love to play with little balloons. God's Holy Spirit is still with us, transforming, changing and creating, even during this time of lockdown, with the most wonderful and creative ways. The Christian message needs to be communicated now more than ever during this increasingly secular society of ours. The church has a voice that has reverberated down the centuries, telling of the overwhelming love of God shown in Jesus. Sometimes, however, it is easy for Christians to fail to listen. Our message is extraordinary. But we need to speak boldly and to speak the same language. Our language needs to be understood. And we need to ask ourselves, are we guilty of not sharing? Are we guilty of not communicating this amazingly wonderful faith of ours? Are we like the deflated balloon? Or are we like the beautiful balloon soaring high, transfixing those who look upon it? Are we alive? Are we filled with the Spirit? Are we not afraid to share our faith with others? For if we are, then Jesus has promised we needn't be shy, coy or embarrassed. For the Spirit will give us all the words we need for whatever situation we find ourselves in. God's Holy Spirit is the spirit we received at our baptism. It is the same spirit that was poured out upon those people and the disciples at that first Pentecost. It's not half of God's spirit. It's not like Diet Coke. It is the Holy Spirit. It lives, it breathes, and it has its being within us. It is the Holy Spirit that is present with us when we feel the anxiety of lockdown. God's Holy Spirit, the Comforter, is with us. Always with us. Forever with us. And our duty is to tell the world about this wonderful faith of ours. So happy birthday to all Christians everywhere in the world. Amen. Let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy Spirit of peace, we pray for our homes and nations where there is discord and conflict. Pour out your breath of peace. The people may listen to each other, may respect one another, may honour each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit of hope, we pray for those who at this present time of pandemic live in despair. For those who can see no purpose in their lives. For those who cannot see the way ahead. And for those who feel completely alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit of unity, we pray for your church for its ministry to the faithful, for its mission to the world. May the spirit of Pentecost breathe upon us, and may we witness to that word the comfort, meaning and love that you offer. Heal our differences and make us one in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our homes and together, we join in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Now, it's such a pity with this beautiful weather that we can't be on our usual wits and teas and our wits and parties, but that day will come. And this afternoon, if you're having cake like me, just hold it up and before you put that mouthful in, try to remember and to say thank you for all those people that have shared the Christian faith with you, whether it was as a child or as an adult. Thank God for our church, the worldwide church of Christians. So come Holy Spirit, fill us with your love and send us out in Jesus' name. Amen. May God be with us as we walk gently upon this earth. May our eyes always be open to see its beauty. May the sunshine in our hearts to guide us. May the rain wash away our sorrows to lighten us. May the breeze blow new strength into our being. May the moon bring us rest and peace as the love of God enfolds us and lead us safely to a new day. May we keep safe in the sun, keep dry in the rain, and prayerful in all weathers. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and those you love and for whom you pray, today at Pentecost and always. Amen.